Cleidocranial dysplasia. Ever seen contortionists who can approximate their shoulders? Well, some are naturally flexible, while others have a condition called cleidocranial dysplasia. Looking at this picture, I'm guessing most of us who are addicted to Netflix know that this is Dustin Henderson from Stranger Things. And for those of us addicted to Stranger Things, we are no strangers to his condition and the various struggles he faces. So this video is all about cleidocranial dysplasia. What is cleidocranial dysplasia? Cleidocranial dysplasia or cleidocranial dysotosis, also known as Marie and Senton's disease, Shitawa Marie Senton syndrome is a rare genetic condition that affects the development of bones, especially the clavicles and the cranium. What causes cleidocranial dysplasia? It is transmitted as an autosomal dominant trait caused by mutations in the CBFA1, aka RUNX2 gene located on the chromosome 6P21. Let's discuss some of its key features. Individuals with cleidocranial dysplasia display a range of distinctive features. One of the interesting ones comes from the name itself. The first part of cleidocranial dysplasia is cledo, which means clavicle. Remember Dustin squeezing through the vents? How did that happen? The condition involves clavicular hypoplasia or agenesis, which is the underdevelopment or absence of the collarbones. As you can see from the actor's picture, he has narrow shoulders that can be brought forward to meet the midline. So as you can see, the incomplete formation of the collarbones also leads to hyperflexibility. The next part of cleidocranial dysplasia is the cranial part. The skull is also affected by delayed closure of fontanelles, which are the soft spots on a baby's skull, and open sutures which are the junction between the bones of the skull. These sutures may close with the presence of additional small bones called Wormian bones. As a result, the shape of the skull becomes more spherical, giving it a characteristic appearance referred to as the Arnold head. Fontanelles Wormian bones What are these? At birth, the newborn's skull consists of five major bones, two frontal, two parietal and one occipital. The bones that shape the cranium begin unfused, leaving several gaps between the individual bones of the infant skull. These gaps are composed of membranous connective tissue and are known as fontanelles, often referred to as soft spots. Six fontanelles are present during infancy, with the most notable being the anterior and posterior fontanelles. As the growth and development of the newborn continue, each fontanelle will close within their respective timelines by a process known as intramembranous ossification. The average closure time of the anterior fontanelle ranges from 13 to 24 months. Unlike the anterior fontanelle, the posterior fontanelle completely closes within about 6 to 8 weeks after birth. Now what are these Wormian bones? Wormian bones are accessory bones that occur within cranial suture and fontanelles most commonly within the posterior sutures. They occur more frequently in disorders that have reduced cranial ossification, hypotonia or decreased movement, thereby resulting in deformational brachycephaly. The head shape tends to be brachycephalic, which means that it appears wider and shorter in appearance as compared to typical head shapes. They present with prominent frontal, parietal and occipital bones and give the head a distinct appearance. There are many other abnormalities seen along with skeletal abnormalities, including wide pubic symphysis, which is the joint between the two halves of the pelvis, dental abnormalities, short middle bones of the fifth finger, delayed skeletal maturation, hearing impairment, and in some cases, mild mental retardation. Let us move on to the oral manifestations. These include a high narrow arched palate, and a predisposition to cleft palate. The maxilla may appear underdeveloped. Enlarged mandibles are observed in the majority of the affected patients. One of the recurring themes in Stranger Things is Dustin's teeth, or the lack of them. Prolonged retention of deciduous teeth, delayed eruption of permanent teeth, and the presence of supernumerary teeth are common. I told you a million times, my teeth are coming in. 
It's called cledocranial dysplasia. Wait, there's more. But before we go further down the rabbit hole, subscribe to our channel. What about the radiographic features? Radiographic examination plays an important role in the diagnosis of cledocranial dysplasia as the images reveal widely patent anterior fontanelles and sutures along with Wormian bones in the skull. The clavicles may appear as fragmented or thin structures. Delayed ossification of the pelvic bones, such as the pubic and ischial bones, is frequently observed. Radiographic examination often reveals the presence of supernumerary teeth and other dental anomalies. When it comes to the treatment and prognosis, it is important to note that there is no specific cure. A collaborative treatment approach that involves various specialists would improve the quality of life greatly for individuals with this condition. Care for oral conditions, such as restoring carious deciduous teeth, is crucial. By carefully timing surgical procedures to uncover teeth and utilizing orthodontic techniques for repositioning so that excellent functional results can be achieved. Coming back to our Stranger Things hero, in the first season, he has a very visible gap with teeth missing. In the second season, he wears dentures. And in the subsequent seasons, he seems to be wearing braces. This is in line with the actor who has the condition in real life, where he had to undergo several surgeries to remove his supernumerary teeth, wear dentures, and then use appliances to extrude his permanent teeth. It is important to note that individuals with this condition can lead a normal life in terms of life expectancy with proper management and support. With that, we have come to the end of today's video. Let's go through the key points to be noted. It is characterized by skeletal abnormalities, primarily affecting the collarbones. The absence or underdevelopment of clavicles leads to a narrow shoulder that can be brought forward to meet in the middle of the chest. The skull abnormalities include delayed closure of fontanelles and sutures, resulting in larger fontanelles, and the presence of extra small bones called Wormian bones. The head shape tends to be brachycephalic, with a wide short appearance and prominent frontal, parietal and occipital bones. In skeletal abnormalities, the other features observed are wide pubic symphysis, dental abnormalities, short middle bones of the fifth finger, delayed skeletal maturation, hearing loss, and mild mental retardation. Diagnosis is based on clinical examination, radiographic imaging. Treatment aims to manage the symptoms which include an orthodontic, oral surgical, and orthopedic approach. Pop quiz. We notice that a majority of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel yet. If you're among them, please subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss an upload.